recognize common arrhythmias. So the problem with arrhythmias, right, is you never know if it's that shark, that shark in the background with arrhythmias because it can come back and bite you. So when we think about arrhythmias, you think of either too slow, bradycardia, too fast, which is tachycardia. And when we talk about too fast, it can either be narrow QRS or wide QRS. We can have skips. These are PVCs or premature atrial contractions that people feel like they have an extra beat. But, you know, again, I only have 25 minutes. So if we're going to talk about this, if I could get the next slide, we're going to talk about too slow. And then we're also going to talk about too fast only with wide complex tachycardia. So we're going to talk about bradycardia, because that's the kind of thing you see in the office a lot, trying to decide and what uh, should I do, and then wide complex tachycardia. So let's go with too slow first. So this is a 22-year-old medical student at the University of Florida, complains of palpitations uh, several weeks ago, has an orthopedic procedure that was performed without complications. No prior medical history, physical examination is normal. You then, you know, on telemetry, right, uh, you're called because of an arrhythmia, and here's the arrhythmia. So in fact, you can clearly see that this looks OK. And then there's something that happens here, right? And we'll talk about this at length, and then it returns. So should we refer for an echo, right? Because everyone nowadays has an echocardiographic result stamped on their head. Do we refer to a cardiologist? Do we just say, oh my gosh, slow heart rate. There's a pause here. Let's just refer for a pacemaker. And then finally, do we do nothing? Because you know he's a gator, and really, I'm a seminal. And so I'm just going to leave as is. So let's go through this. When you think about bradycardia, there are only two causes of bradycardia. You can have sinus node dysfunction, where the sinus node doesn't generate a beat. You can also have AV block, where the beat is generated by the sinus node. The atria contract. But since the his bundle and the AV node form the only connection between the atria and the ventricles, in fact, you then have block conduction. And electrocardiographically, they look like this. When you have sinus node dysfunction, you have P wave QRS, P wave QRS, the sinus node doesn't fire, and you have then a few junctional beats. Conversely, in AV block, where you have block conduction between the atria and the ventricles, you have plenty of P waves. But since they don't talk, they don't talk to the ventricles, you then have a junctional beat. And here is the issue from an electrocardiogram, because both have what? Junctional beats. So how do I sort of discern between the two? The way that you discern it is that in sinus node, sinus node dysfunction, you don't have P waves. And in AV block, you have plenty of P waves, but not enough QRSs. So let's go through some of this. So here is then P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS, and then something happens.